Ideally, the trend line for points 1 and 2 would be on a moderate slope close to 45 degrees, and comprise of sharper swing points that are recent and relatively close together. Then place point 3 on a major structure such as at the peak of this last major reversal. In this case, since there are several downswing points around the same height, choosing either one won't make a big difference, but usually you would choose the most recent downswing point around the reversal area. Unless there is a very steep and short term drop with frequent swing points, usually it won't be useful to base a FIB channel on such a steep trend line such as this. Generally, a trend that is more long term and or has a more moderate slope is best paired with FIB channels that are also of a moderate slope. And sometimes point 3 may not be at the exact location of a major swing point, because it is a question of balance when determining how far apart you want the Fibonacci levels to be from each other within the channel. Generally, if swing points and retracements within a trend are more volatile and cover a wider price range, you want the Fibonacci channel to cover a wider area. Such as in this case, where it is quite suitable to have point 3 relatively far away from points 1 and 2, in order to produce Fibonacci levels that are far apart from each other. Otherwise, the trend lines within the channel would be all congested and crammed together and not be very useful.